Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as the savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we break them down. Explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. All right, welcome back. Uh, we will still continue the discussion on that drama that unfolded at uh, the Senate when um, the former governor of River State was cleared. And uh, of course, we, we had all expected that drama. And I've been joined on the program by uh, Mr. Anyakachi Ubani, who is a lawyer and a political analyst. Uh, Mr. Bani, thank you very much for coming on the program. The last time you were here, we, we, we devoted so much time to mm. this issue of mm -hmm. uh, the former river, uh, governor of River State, Rotimi Amechi. Mm. Uh, of course, I remember you saying, look, it, it would be very difficult for the Senate to clear him. And, uh, you know, now it has come to pass. I mm. mean, what's your take on what, what actually happened? Were you surprised mm. that eventually the Senate yeah. cleared him? No, no, I wasn't surprised. You know, my statement also uh, went for that to say, look, if the APC uh, senators, uh, you know, come together because they are in the majority, uh, there is no way the minority will now determine uh, the the procedure uh, they will adopt. They will rather determine the procedure itself. And then if we now reach out to all the politicians and some of the governors, you know, in that Senate, there is no way they will not come together probably and clear him. And so one is clearly happy that uh, Rotimi Amechi has been uh, cleared, but in very controversial uh, very, very controversial. And, and somebody has said that almost everything about Rotimi Meiji always uh, passes through strenuous uh, process. You know, nothing about him comes easily. Becoming a governor was uh, was uh, problematic. Becoming a, a minister problematic. Becoming even the chairman of Governors Forum. It was in his own time that in his seventeen <laughs> seventeen become uh, became greater than uh, nineteen. Uh, sixteen uh, actually uh, became yeah, greater, yeah, than, greater 19. than nineteen. So he has always passed through that strenuous process. Uh, but eventually, uh, it was cleared uh, uh, last week or this week, and uh, the the PDP senators worked out. Uh, the working out had no implication whatsoever. Yeah, because we, yes. I, I mean, you, there we can see the sen mm. senators now working out. Mm. The, they're definitely because they are not in the majority, so That's right. it, it really doesn't matter. It does. It didn't. It doesn't. Uh, the works. I mean, re ethics and privileges committee made a recommendation. And the process is that if a, a, a recommendation is made by the, a committee, they, they, they will debate it in the whole house because they form a committee of the entire house and take a decision whether that particular decision of the committee will stand or not. And so when they worked out, the majority uh, that form a quorum took a decision on that report and said so the, the report is rejected. Uh, and, and that was a wise thing to do because I would have wanted them also to discuss the report itself because the PDP were making uh, so much mountain out of that report. And I said the best thing for them to do is to discuss the report and take a position, which is what actually they did. And that position was that the report is rejected because the normal procedure actually in the Senate... Do, do, do you mm, have a feeling mm, that, mm, you know, a partisanship was actually mm, allowed to come into mm, that report? Because mm, the chairman of that committee, the mm, Ethics and Privileges Committee, mm, of course, uh, is of the PDP. Okay. And uh, you have other APC members mm -hmm. in that uh, Ethics Committee, and mm -hmm. they, were, they were all singing a different tune completely. Right. Mm -hmm. Dino Malai, um, a week before, said, look, that the report was just a one-line statement, mm -hmm. that um, the Senate... Uh, that the, the committee's uh, resolution was mm -hmm. that um, the Senate would not mm -hmm. intervene in any matter at all that's in court. And then mm -hmm. we saw the chairman of the Ethics Committee on mm -hmm. that day that mm -hmm. um, Amici was cleared coming out to say the committee decided mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. Amici should not even mm -hmm. have appeared before mm -hmm. uh, the Senate in the first place. Yeah, let's take it step by step. Uh, as I said earlier, if, if a matter is referred to ethics, I mean, to any committee whatsoever in the House, they have standing rules. They have, you know, procedures they follow. Mm. Now, if a matter is in court, the normal procedure in the Senate over the years we've heard is that they don't deal. You don't deal with any matter that is, you know, before the court, another court, another arm of government. It is, you know, a matter that that particular arm of government should dispose of before they come in. And so going by that rule and going by the procedure, you know, they have, they've, they've set out for themselves, you know, previously, the proper procedure for the Ethics Committee would be, if the matter is in court, we should not deal with this matter. The status quo should be maintained. Let's allow him to be cleared, you know, and then if the court decides otherwise, fine. 
But for the committee now, now to come up with the report and say, oh, because the beneficiary has gone to court, he's even the plaintiff in the case, he's a claimant in a court case, uh, that for that circumstance, they will not recommend him for confirmation. That, that, is, that is a departure from their own rules, you know, even from their own precedent. Because their precedent was, if a matter goes to court, don't deal. You know, so it was very, partisanship actually played a, you know, a bigger role. But the point is, they still allow the procedure. And I love what the Senate president did. Well, bring the report. What is the content of the report? The report is that he should not be confirmed. Fine. What is the acceptance or what is the rejection or, you know, procedure in that house is to bring it before the committee of the entire house. And they took a decision. And that, what was that decision? Reject the report of that ethics committee before you now go into the process of confirmation. So they followed all the normal procedure, even if you go to court. Over the confirmation of Retimi and Meiji, you find out that all the entire procedures were, you know, duly followed. Uh, at, at some point, you tend to get the sense that, look, what we had on, pl on play that day, especially mm -hmm. when you listen to some of um, the PDP lawmakers there mm -hmm. who spoke and uh, the uh, APC mm -hmm. lawmakers who spoke, mm -hmm. it, it would appear it was like a battle of morality over the constitution. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, Andy. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that you, you've got that sense yeah, at I did. all. I did. That, mm -hmm. It's like we we're having a war mm -hmm. between morality, mm -hmm. the, uh, the PDP uh, senators preaching morality, mm -hmm. saying it's not mm -hmm. right, and the APC senators mm -hmm. saying, look, it is constitutional, mm -hmm. we have to follow the law. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, they, there were sentiments, you know, sentiments flying all over the place. And uh, the people that were even playing the, 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 the rule, you know, of morality, you know, they don't have the locus, you know, and all of them have cases. That are pending, even there, are, some of them have invitations still pending from EFCC and others. So, issue of morality, you know, wasn't even there because who comes to equity? We know must come with clean hands. Let's assume that, uh, but not considering that morality is supposed to be the predominant uh, uh, measure you use in a, you know, confirming a minister. None of them there is even qualified in, on issue of morality. But I think that the thing that should take precedent is the law. And what is the position of the law in case of any person is accused of any crime is for a competent court of jurisdiction to make a pronouncement as to whether the person is innocent or is guilty. It is when the court has made a pronouncement you can now begin to say this person is clearly, you know, an innocent person or a guilty, you know, is guilty of an offense. You cannot because somebody has made an allegation and then you now, you know, judge the person guilty. No, that is not what the law says. The law says the person must be pronounced. Take him to a court of competence. Let the process you know, be, be begun, you know, and then let him be given an opportunity to defend himself. It's very important because it's a constitutional provision. The issue of fair hearing is provided for in Section 36 of 1999 as amended that anyone who is accused of any crime or allegation must be given an opportunity of defending himself, including hiring a lawyer of his own choice. Now, in doing that, the, the law has exhausted all the procedures for hearing an accused person, you know, by giving him fair hearing. You have not done that. There is a report, you know, indicting him according to you. And according to you, there was nowhere in that report that he was even indicted. And he has gone to court to challenge the report of that particular panel. So you allow all that to be exhausted before you can, you know, assume that the man is uh, guilty of that offense. But even at that, as I said earlier, the issue of morality, which person, who of them, among all the people that were alleging immorality on the part of Amechi, are clean? clean. If you want to name all of them, none of them, you know, is actually clean because they all have, you mm. know, allegations of uh, corruption hanging all over their necks. So they don't have that uh, cleanness. Let's, to begin let, to let's look at what this would mean for the Senate president. Before now, a lot of people had expressed the fear and uh, we know the Senate president, Bukola Saraki, uh, had, should we say, an unwitting alliance or, or I don't know how to put it now, had some kind of alliance now. Uh, with the PDP, uh, because obviously he got to, to become Senate president with, of course, the help of the PDP senators. But now we saw PDP senators taking a walk. Do you think that relationship between the Senate president now and the PDP, do you think that relationship is now strained? Because we also saw the Senate president deciding to align with his party, the mm. APC. And the APC, of course, mm. issuing a statement to commend him and to say, look, that there was no more division in the party. Yeah, the, the foundation of everything is very key. And uh, if the foundation be destroyed, the Bible says, what can the righteous do? He didn't need them in the first place to emerge as a senator. If they, were, they have worked together, they had worked together as a, as a majority political party, he could have emerged too. 
you know, as a Senate president, you know, if there was that consensus amongst the APC governors alongside with some of the people that love him initially. But the circumstances of his emergence, you know, was very controversial. And I said it here, either on your television or elsewhere, that it, he would require the president president to perpetually be a slave to the membership of the House in order to retain his position. And then the moment he wants to depart and want to assert his independence, then his position will be threatened. Yeah, and that is actually what is going on now. He has asserted himself as, look, I am a member of APC and I must abide by the, the standard and rules of APC and what the agenda of APC is all about, change. And they have submitted names of those they want to work with the president to actually affect the change. And so he cannot, you know, alongside with the minority, stand against the interests of the political party that brought him to power and work against it and then, you know, feel that he's doing the right thing. And so what he has done is a wise thing to align with his political party in clearing the names of those that the president wants to work with, you know, for the change mantra they have all advocated. Fine. Now, he has now offended the, the, the PDP, PDP members. And, yeah. and then, so, so the relationship will never be the same. I doubt whether when he's going to the next court case, whether the large number of PDP members that, that, <laughs> that have visually accompanied him will actually accompany him to that particular, you know, trial process. You know, now that the Court of Appeal has uh, asked the uh, CCT to continue the, the trial process. So I doubt whether they will accompany him that. And from now onwards, that relationship is actually strained. And things will never be the same. So what he requires now is he has to fall back to his political party and remain in their good books so that if there is any opportunity to impeach him, the PDP cannot muster the necessary to third majority to impeach him. Are you following me? So he requires his political party now. So his, his sustenance, you know, as a PDP, I mean, as a, a president of, of the Senate, Senate, is now dependent upon God and his political party members now. Now that he has started to be, you know, in their good books and all that, so he will remain there. But I doubt whether the PD people will love him the way they used to love him because their agenda was different from APC agenda. When they claimed that they wanted independence of the House, it's not for the interests of the, of the nation, it's to frustrate APC and the agenda. And for whatever change mantra they have been singing, they will want to frustrate it. And they have wanted him to be on their side in order to truncate the plan of APC and the agenda and all that. But then he is now trying to assert himself and he has gone back to his political party, which is good for him, you know, and then let him now remain in their good books because the EPDP alone cannot muster the necessary majority to, to actually impeach him. And, and you mm. think um, in the APC, mm. all is now just going to go well for um, the, uh, the, the Senate president? I, I would be wrong to, to jump to that conclusion. I would be wrong to jump to that conclusion. Well, that suspicion will still yeah, be there. Yeah, because the suspicion will still be there. Because, you see, the way he emerged and the way he overruled everything, including when they submitted names of those that will now become the leaders of the Senate, and he turned that particular request down and then went ahead with names he had already made up his mind with. So I, I don't think that that relationship will be as normal. But for now, they are uh, also watching him. But they are happy you think he has so far. No, no, so far. The I tell you that even those... Even those that were not happy with, uh, with uh, Saraki, you know, as members of the public, are now gravitating towards him. Even Dino Menari, I was looking at the tweets. People were now saying good things about Dino, especially the motion he moved for the airport, in, uh, airport uh, renovation, you know, where the money was so much. And he was the one that raised the alarm that the amount is so outrageous. And the House now came in to, to really ask the president to review the amount of money they want to use in renovation. So I saw tweets now commending uh, Dino Milaya. But before he was, he, he was honestly, almost everything is attack on him, on his person and on his integrity. But, you know, Nigerians forget easily, you know, when you behave you know, uh, well, you know, politically, mm. they, they gravitate towards you and they begin to say good things about him. So if he continues in this manner, you may find out that Nigeria will say, well, we might as well forgive him. Is there nothing the president can do even concerning his matter or another? But then I will want the president to insist and then allow yeah, the trial. I was just going to say that yeah. because some, some, there have been suggestions yeah. uh, in some places that, uh, okay, mm. now that he's, um, you know, toward the party line, mm. that we, we might see the case... Uh, uh, at the CCT now, the Code of Conduct Tribunal mm -hmm. dropped. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want the president to, to get involved in can, that. Yeah, but, uh, because that would be sending a very dangerous... And uh, the president can't just drop the case. He can't even do that because did. judiciary now. Let me say this. It will be a dangerous president. We want the entire process, you know, to come to a conclusion. You know, why Why the nation is suffering today, DG? I must tell you this, you know, and this, I, mean, I may be spiritual concerning this, is that most times in, in, in for us as a nation, we have always taken the wrong step in things we do. We have never done things properly. We have never laid a solid foundation for this nation. We have not insisted on things being done properly as a nation. And so we have come back to pay heavily, you know, a heavy price for all those things we have not done rightly. 
So if we, you know, want to start now in a fresh with, you know, the APCA as a government in 2015, I will want, you know, whatever we believe in, we pursue the logical conclusion. Now, if the Senate president is being tried, let us allow the entire, entire trial process to go through. Now, truncating it at any point in time, we'll be sending a dangerous signal and then, you know, make a mess of the entire, you know, uh, corruption mantra. You know, you've been anti-corruption, you've been, you know, ch chanting that you are against it. Now, you, you will spoil your record. It messes up the entire country and then we are back to square one and then the impunity will come to end in the system. We continue and people say, well, the body language, you know, has, we are now understanding the body and the body language that a man condones corruption and that will not be too heavy. So, my own take and my own advice is that I will want this trial to, to go to the entire, entire hog. Let, he, let him be tried. If he's innocent, let the court make a pronouncement. So, if, he's, if he's guilty, let there be a pronouncement made. And that's so, sending a so what then would you say to those mm. who say, look, the clearance of Amechi and mm. the fact that he's going to become a, mm. a, a minister under mm. President Buhari's government has mm. certainly damaged his anti-corruption uh, uh, posture? Mm. No, but that, that is, again, acting on sentiment. Amechi does not in any way enjoy any immunity. If there is any charge against him at any point in time, he, he's only the president, the vice, the governor and the deputy governor that enjoys immunity. Now, any other person in this country can be tried at any point in time. So even if Amechi is cleared and there is sufficient evidence to, uh, that actually indicted him and warrant Amechi being you know, dragged to the court, Amechi should go and face the, the, the charges. And so I don't think for the fact that somebody has made an allegation against you, that that alone is sufficient to say that the person is corrupt. It's just like tomorrow some, they want to appoint me as a minister or anything, and somebody now comes up with the allegation as, oh, well, well, Obani is corrupt. Or for the fact that he says Obani is corrupt, then everyone says, oh, don't appoint him because somebody says that. That would be sending and, you know, and setting a dangerous well, in, precedent. But in this you know, case, it is not in the this proper, case yeah. people say well, yeah. a panel was actually set up to investigate. Yes. What panel was that? The panel that, you know, everything was politically motivated. You saw what happened. Be, when his name was just about to be submitted, the panel quickly rushed and you know, submitted a report and then there was a white paper. And then he has a report. And he presented, he said, he, that day he came to the Senate for screening. He said, look, with the due respect of the Senate president, I have the report myself. I can present it if he, if he allows me to do that. So can we go to the report and see where he's indicted? You know, people have asked questions about this indictment of uh, Rotimi Amechi. What actually did he do? He was alleged to have sold the public asset. And did he now appropriate the money? Did he put the money into his private account and all that? Because it is easy to make allegations, even against uh, uh, Aquabio. Somebody wrote a position that Aquabio is alleged to have stolen several billions of naira. Now, one thing is to make allegation. One thing is for you to prove, prove. you know, what they call ingredient of offense. If there is no tracing of this money to his private account or where he has misappropriated it or where he has ordered the money to be transferred into a private account that belongs to him or to somebody related to him or somebody that is known to him, then it will be difficult for you to. Because it's good, you just you can allege, oh, that he has squandered the entire budget of, a, of the state. You must trace that money that he has appropriated to himself in order to succeed. Because there must be actus reus. There must be mens rea. If you don't prove those two ingredients, are, you know, in an offense, you cannot succeed. So a lot of people make allegations without, you know, necessary, you know, knowing that there are necessary ingredients. And that's why you see most of the time, those cases, when they come before the court, you know, they are thrown out, even though the public have adjudged that particular person to be guilty. So it's important that the process of trial must go through, through the normal, you know, process, you know, as a lawyer. Right. You know, so making allegation is one thing. Convicting the person is a different ballgame entirely. So I don't think that this man's administration has been messed up by Amechi or even a Fashola. They even say about Fashola. And I say for God's sake, let the trial process go through. Let these people be convicted by any court of law. Then he, the man, cannot continue to return them. They are, they, they, they don't enjoy that's, that's immunity. For sure. uh, that's so for please, sure. allegation cannot because if we allow that, they mean any other person. There is no person that you come up tomorrow that Nigerians will not write a you know petition it against and say this man is guilty. This man is uh, you know another, and that will not be sending a right signal for us as a nation. So if anyone is guilty, let the court make that pronouncement and not the public and not the press. It's very Mr. important. Bani, thank you very much for your contributions. You. Thank you pleasure. very much for coming on the program. I appreciate you. Well, that's it on the program. If you want to watch it again, it's simple. All you just need to do is go to our website, tv 360 nigeriacom You'll find the program and lots more there. You can also watch us on YouTube by subscribing to our YouTube channel. It's uh, youtube.com forward slash tv 360 nigeria You can also uh, join us on Google Plus at tv 360 nigeria or just like us on Facebook. The address is facebook.com forward slash TV360 online. You can also follow us on Twitter. Our handle is at TV360 online. Thank you very much for watching. We're back again next week. See you then.